name's Todd McConnell. My nom de plume is Calif now. So I kind of procrastinated um, presenting my virus story uh, for a lot of reasons, but mainly because I felt like it would be too long. You know, me and Viro spent about four days a week together for five years. So there's so many stories I can tell. There's also some stories I can't tell, but um, I'm gonna begin with the first time I ever met Viro. So growing up, uh, you know, as soon as I could really comprehend music, uh, I became obsessed with hip hop. Um, you know, artists like Karis One and Rakim, uh, Cool G Rap, Big Daddy Kane, groups like De La Soul and Tribe Called Quest, Beastie Boys. In middle school, like I really, I wanted to be a Beastie Boy. Um, but you know, I was just obsessed with music in general and, and hip hop music. I felt like it was just the coolest music ever made. And you know, growing up in South New Jersey, you know, I started to DJ and, and, and make music on my own. But I really felt like you know, I, I had to go to Philadelphia to really experience this stuff. I never felt like it was happening in my own town or in the neighboring towns. And uh, I remember I, I ordered a piece of equipment, music equipment from this local store. And uh, this kid Craig ended up calling me when, you know, when the piece of equipment came in. We ended up talking and he told me about these two guys making beats, these two twins, uh, EDK. And it turns out that it was in this uh, town, Lindenwald, which is like right across from where I grew up. And I, I really couldn't believe that that, that was that was true. But uh, I got excited, you know, those those people that were doing the same thing that I was doing and, and the same thing that I was passionate about in my, my own neighborhood. So I remember I went to this, uh, I went to this studio in, in such excitement. I was in my early 20s. And, uh, you know, I pull up, I pull up to this like, it's kind of like a rundown mini mall. You know, it was like a beauty supply store and like a dry cleaner. And on the side of the building, there was a door and it turns out that their studio was called Side Door. And as I walked in, you know, the cloud of smoke kind of hit my face. Uh, in the one corner, there's, um, you know, beat machines and these two twins making beats, like gritty, hardcore hip hop beats. And then in the other corner, in the back corner, there was um, like a, a homemade uh, mic booth and there was an MC in the mic booth just with the craziest energy just going going off on the, on the song so far out take days to catch the rest of me make niggas legs fall off like chronic leprosy stimulated mandated the rap god when i was created but since then i further escalated it's all the shame in this rap game niggas throw a punchline and they rhyme the game fame for their name i blame the industry for poisoning the culture they got money in sight and they swoop down like vultures pick it to the bone and, they leave it alone. and that that was slim dism um and then off in the other corner <clears throat> You know, there's this tall, like six foot six kid just spitting the illest lyrics I've ever heard in my life. So Viro and Slim were uh, the coolest people I've ever met. And they were the real thing. You know, they were true artists. And I really couldn't believe uh, that I had the opportunity to hang out with those guys and be a part of the, you know, the music that we made together. Um, it was really, really surreal. You know, we would hang out there until the sun came up. You know, I remember when it came time to leave, opening the door, and it was kind of getting bright outside. Those were always, uh, that was very common. But uh, I remember one day, Viro kind of pulled me aside and said, hey man, I really like your music. Uh, let's work on something together. And I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe he was interested, but you know, I, I, I played it cool. In my head, I was like, yeah, 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 uh, uh, sure, sure. You know, but I remember I, I, I played it pretty cool. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, let's work on some stuff together. Um, but I was uh, blown away. This, this amazing talent wanted to work with me, um, especially earlier on in my, in my music career. So yeah, I remember uh, the first time Viral came to my house, you know, my mom was, was uh, excited for me she could see the excitement that I had. And uh, I remember she cooked dinner for us and, you know, me and Viral went down to the studio and uh, I was nervous kind of showing him 
my beats, you know what I mean? And uh, he made me feel real comfortable. You know, Viral always um, encouraged me and um, really always inspired me. And he was such a great artist. And uh, I really always, I couldn't believe I was working with him. Even five years down the line, um, I still really, I always took a step back and couldn't believe I had the chance to work with him. And, uh, you know, he always, um, I never got a chance to really tell him this, but, uh, you know, he would always mention my name in the, in the music that we made and always made me a part of the song. And that meant so much to me. You know, Viro had that uh, classic hip hop mentality that, you know, it was always the DJ and the MC. And uh, he really did that with all the producers that he worked with as well. He would always shout them out in the song and not, not every MC does that. And, uh, uh, you know, Viral always made it a point to uh, include the people that he worked with and make them feel just as much a part of the track. And uh, that's what made him very special. And a funny story is after we recorded Tom's Backwards, I remember, you know, my mom, I guess, heard, heard us working through the vents or through the floor. And uh, the next day she, she really wanted to hear the song and I didn't know what to do, you know. <laughs> my mom was very supportive. She wanted to hear the music. And um, so I said, okay. I was like, the lyrics are a little explicit, but you know, She's like, no, I, I heard it, it sounded good. So I ended up playing her the song, and I remember I was like sweating with embarrassment showing my mom this song, this, this smutty song. And, uh, you know, I think it kind of went over her head. You know, there's some, some lyrics in that that are kind of subliminal, you know, like dump spunk on your muffin and bludgeon your pumpkin. Um, you know, those words separated uh, aren't so bad. So I don't think she was really aware of those songs, but there was, there's certain lyrics in that song that are obvious. And every time those, like that hook came up about, you know, when we were listening to it, you know, call me Chuck Smut or Mr. Anal Probe. Every time that part came out, either <coughs> cough or, or like, mom, do you like it? Or, you know, try to, try to distract her from the obvious lyrics. But uh, she was like, yeah, it's good, it's good. I remember she was <laughs> really impressed with, with the music. And uh, she was always a big fan of, of Byron, so um, that was kind of a funny story, showing my mom Tums backwards. Um, you know, when we were in the studio, if I had an idea and presented it to Viro, he would basically finish my sentence and he was thinking the same idea. And vice versa, Viro would have an idea and I'd be like, exactly, man, that's exactly what I was thinking. And that continued throughout all the albums we made. We never we never dis really disagreed on much, you know, everything that we planned to do, we, we were always, a, we always kind of agreed on it. Even the name, uh, when we first did Ars Nova, I was reading in, um, you know, I was studying history at the time and I was reading in a book and that, that word, those words just jumped off the page at me and said Ars Nova, uh, which in Latin means new art, it was like the Renaissance. and. That was the attitude we had for the Ars Nova. It was this new, fresh beginning for him and for me. Um, and if you listen to the lyrics on Ars Nova, it was definitely outside the box and, and, and futuristic. And that was the kind of idea and the goal is to kind of give hip hop music this new, fresh start. And uh, we, we both were like, yeah, that's the name that works. We thought it was cool. You know, we obviously changed the S to a Z to make it hip hop, you know, but um, yeah, that was the beginning. I remember uh, I used to drive to where Viro lived and um, I always used to pick him up at like the local stop shop. Uh, it was like a pizza shop and like a little kind of mini mart. 
and if there was a day that we couldn't get together, maybe he was at work or I had to go to work, I would, this was early on, I would uh, bring beat CDs and I would cross the street because I knew this was his walk back to his house and there was two fences like underneath a tree and it was a little kind of crevice in between the fences and I would stash the beat CDs in between the, the fence posts and uh, you know when Viro would walk home from work he would take the beat CDs and listen to them and uh, he would either call me and say you know I got the beat CD or the next day he would just come over and be like yo I got three new songs <laughs> and that was always really cool because you know I kind of always would cross my fingers like I hope he likes the beats and nine times out of ten he would just come over and say I have three new songs my, it blew my mind. I couldn't believe how fast this guy wrote. And it was, you know, none of his rhymes were ever throwaways. You know, we always, um, we don't really have, I have no uh, unreleased tracks from Viral. You know, we would record everything and release everything because the lyrics were just that good. Another really, really funny story. Um, was the time when you know when we recorded Jersey's Finest you know me and Viola were very proud of how that album came out it was like the first official record we did you know the other albums I'm very proud of and I know Viola was very proud of but they were kind of more like demos in a way the way we approach the way we um, released those songs I mean the way we approached the records we approached every record very seriously but um, when we Put together Jersey's Finest, we were already uh, a couple albums in, you know, we were hitting our stride, you know, we were we were in our prime working on Jersey's Finest, and uh, we had the idea of putting together press kits and getting the addresses of every label we could think of in New York. You know, we had this mentality of, let's get signed to a label, we need support for this record. So... You know, we did the research, we got as many, maybe like 20 record labels address and uh, put together a press kit with like a cover letter and a CD and we drove up to New York. And the story that we had, it was totally made up, was we performed at a showcase and we were approached by your A&Rs and they were really interested in us, but we lost the, your particular uh, A&R's contact, but we remembered the label. So we had a couple other meetings. We figured we would stop in at your label and see if we could find the guy that, that approached us. Total, total bullshit story, but um, it worked in a few places, you know. Remember we went to this one place, Matador Records. Uh, I'm not sure if they're around still, but they mostly put out indie rock stuff, but uh figured let's give it a shot. They, you know, they were friendly. They, they took our press kit. Uh, we tried like Def Jam and Universal and all the big, bigger labels, uh, but we couldn't even get in the door. The security there was kind of crazy. Um, we went to Koch Records. Koch was, uh, you know, doing their thing with, with other underground records. They were very supportive of, of underground artists and um, they were very accepting of us. You know, we looked apart. We were dressed up, we had our bracelets on and, you know, we, we were kind of suited up like we were performing. And we went into the Koch and they bought the story. They sent an A&R out. And he took us into the back room and you know sat us down at the table and opened up our press kit and took us very seriously and listened to our story and said, you know, I'm gonna, um, you know, he said at the end of every week, we listen to all the demos in a meeting and we're gonna listen to your demo and we're gonna, we're gonna give it a shot. And, uh, and then, yeah, and then we, <laughs> We get to Def Jux, uh, the Def Jux um, address, and it said something outside. It said like World Music or World Entertainment or something like that. We didn't know if it was Def Jux for sure, but it kind of seemed like maybe they did that, so it kind of disguised their office a little bit. And I remember I was about to give up because you know you had to get buzzed into the place, and I started to walk away, and I hear Viro like, "Yo, I got the door! I got the door! Let's go! Let's go!" I guess someone came outside and Viral grabbed the door after they walked away. And we walk in and we see on their mailboxes that it said World Music or World Entertainment slash Def Jux. So we're like, all right. It said like floor six or seven. We hit the button to the elevator and we're expecting to like just walk into a hallway and 
maybe see a couple artists kind of hanging out in the, in the, you know, in their office. But we <laughs> take the elevator up and the doors open and there's just one person in there and it's this young girl and she's sitting at the desk and she was kind of startled and we were kind of thrown back a little bit as well. And we're like, yeah, we're artists. We want to be signed to Def Chucks. <laughs> we hand over our record. And, you know, she was really sweet. She said, you know, LP usually just signs people that he has relationships with, you know, usually just signs his friends. And, uh, you know, we were kind of disappointed, but we ended up leaving 10 CDs in the office and kind of crossed our fingers and hoped maybe they would listen to it. But who knows whatever happened. But I remember that 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 was a funny, funny experience. You know, <laughs> the doors open and me and Byron just looked at each other and then looked at the girl. And uh, it was, that was a funny time. That was a funny moment. This is this is uh, incredibly difficult to describe all these stories. It's it's um, it's hard to put into words, you know. And putting this this uh, story documentary thing together, um, you know, I probably recorded four hours of this stuff. I don't know how I'm going to edit it. Um, it's just really hard to describe some of these some of these moments um, you know trying to take a step back and kind of put into words how special it was knowing Viro and being a part of the music that you know we created it, it was um, it was the best best thing you know it was the best time of my life you know the best thing I've ever done um, was making music with Viro. Whether we made music or not, we would hang out, watch movies, or um, you know, go to a party, go to a house party, go to Philly, go to a show, um, and you know, those those times were just so so great, and I miss him, and uh, I really hope that his music reaches as many people as it can um, you know it's it's pretty overwhelming to see how many fans viral has now but I feel like it's just not enough you know his name and his music and his catalog his art really deserves to be amongst the greats um, when people say you know who are your favorite MCs of all time his name should definitely be in that category. And I'm not gonna stop promoting his legacy. Um, so I just can only dream and hope that this works. I think about Viral every day and he was the most talented person I've ever met. And it's frustrating that the world doesn't know that. Um, it's very, um, amazing to see the fan base that he has now and everyone that's watching this you know I can't thank you enough for the support and um, you know it's quite amazing to see people from all parts of the world listening to Byro and knowing his music but it's not enough you know he's, he's he deserves to be heard and I'm not gonna stop promoting his records and his art until his name is in the conversation with all the greats. And I really hope everyone here listening does the same um, and look forward to a new remix record every 420 of every year uh, from here on out. And uh, I hope you enjoy the record. And uh, Byro, I miss you. And this is all for you. May the day break. Peace. Yo. Focus your mind on this moment in time. Emerging out the murky waters, Ars Nova arrives. Sound materialize before your eyes. So if you're hearing impaired, envision a snare. It's nonsense to compare Ars Nova's components to any other opponents. We're unrelentingly rare, an omnipotent pair. Banished cowards, planet devour. Win easily, then grin evilly as if it were fair. The reason for that foul 
I'll stench in the air, push you to the edge of your seat. You'll cling to your chair, wistfully stare, get prepared. The renaissance is now on.